morning connections. It's Monday, September 12th, 21. So happy you're here. Thank you for pursuing God. Thank you for continuing to press forward, even in difficult times. We are starting something new, having completed our study of the Gospels yesterday. If you you missed yesterday's service, it's always posted on Facebook. We go live at 10 o'clock each and every Sunday morning. We're turning the page, and those who are aware, um, if you turn the page from the Gospels, you wind up in Acts. And Acts is truly the, the formation of the church. And there are so many great lessons in Acts for us to learn. And so that's where our attention is going to turn next Sunday as we turn the page and follow Jesus just a short ways into the book of Acts as he hands the baton to the church and the church is established. Acts forms the blueprint for everything that we, the Assembly of God, believe. And in parallel to that, I thought it would be a healthy opportunity for us to look at the doctrine of the Assembly of God, whether you are interested in becoming a member of Connections Church, or you're just curious about the Assembly of God and Pentecostalism in general, I hope to carry on a conversation with you that makes it a little less strange, a little less um, uh, detached, that you will see the heart of Jesus, that you will see the heart of God, and understand the roots of, of Pentecostalism and the roots of the Assembly of God. So this is a, a course that I would like to teach as our new members course, as soon as we are transitioning into our new facility. But until I'm able to do that, I thought this would be a great opportunity to, there's 16 fundamental doctrine of the assembly of God. And I thought we would take a run at those 16. We'll probably combine a few along the way but it should give you a basis once we are through the 16 fundamental truths to understand Connections Church better and understand why we are structured the way we are structured and why we believe what we believe. So let's get started. So first fundamental truth out of the gate is that the scriptures are inspired. The scriptures, both Old and New Testament, are verbally inspired of God and are the revelation of God to man, the infallible authoritative rule of faith and conduct. Now, how this is we're going to pursue with this is I'm certainly going to reference all the scriptures and it looks like it could be a little bit larger on the screen. I apologize for that. Um, the references for today are 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17, 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, and 2 Peter 1, verse 21. Now we're not going to be able to go through, you will, as we venture in a little bit further, you'll, you'll recognize that the scripture references will make it very difficult for us to keep to our 15 minutes. So choosing a few of the passages to look at and relying on you to investigate the others. So what this cornerstone of our faith truly is speaking is that there is a standard and God's standard is revealed through his word. And we should stay to that standard because it is, no matter who the author of the particular passage of scripture 
God is the authority behind that. He is the one that inspired every word that we find in our Bible. And he has given us that as the roadmap, as the, the, the way to come into relationship with him, the way to navigate through each and every day. It also speaks to what pleases him and what's within those standards, what's within those boundaries. It also speaks to what displeases him and what's outside of those boundaries. We recognize God as the ultimate authority, our creator as the ultimate authority. And in relationship, we trust that those boundaries that have been established have not been established out of whim, not of, out of malice, but out of love. That if we choose to remain within the boundaries that are defined through the Old Testament and the New Testament, that we will remain safe, that we will remain free, that we will find peace and joy and eternal life. That is the first of 16 fundamental truths of the assembly of God. And as we just spoke, they need to be backed up by scripture. I say that often on Sunday that everything that I share on Sunday should align with God's word, align to the standard. If it does not align to God's standard, then it isn't of God. And the same way with this doctrinal truth, it must be backed up by God's word. So in 2 Timothy 3, 14, we find Paul, who has received the baton directly from Jesus on the road to Damascus. And now his ministry has progressed, and it is his time to pass the baton to the next generation. And within God's word, that's represented with Timothy and Titus. And so many of the things shared in, in Timothy and Titus are everything that Paul has learned and how he developed, how God developed him as a minister of the gospel. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So these words of wisdom to Timothy from Paul are, you know the way. It's the same way as the generations prior to yours have followed. And now it's your turn to pass on what you know to the generation coming behind you. Early on in the church, we were all still figuring this out. But here at Connections Church, we have a strong heritage of, of generation of generation of generation coming before us demonstrating what it is to be rooted in God's word, submitted to his authority. I encourage you, as Paul encourages Timothy, to do it the way that the generations prior did it. Seek God in his word. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, 
and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Perhaps Timothy is, I don't know how to teach these people how to be righteous. I don't have it within me. I, I, what's, where's the rule book? <laughs> Paul's saying you have the rule book. You have God's standard right here. This is all you need. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to, to teach and to guide. But God's standard is well established throughout the, the entire story from Genesis to Revelation. And it's all useful. And you will find in there usefulness in correcting behavior, not out of condemnation, correcting behavior because we desire to help guide people into how to live within those standards. And those that are just come into relationship with God, it's going to take some time to understand the standards and understand their importance and recognize the freedom and the beauty of living to God's standards. So that's number one out of 16. We're going to continue on our journey tomorrow. I hope you'll be here for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that there is a standard. We thank you, Lord, that you are a target that we can, can look towards, and you're never moving. Your standards are never compromised. Your standards are, are, are f fixed boundaries for us. Your authority is firmly established above ours. We are so grateful, Lord. The world would not function without you, whether they recognize you or not, Lord. Our hope and our prayer, Lord, is that the world would wake and recognize who you are. And your standard is not confining, it is necessary. It is, it is not death, it is life. Help us remain strong, help us to continue to align ourselves with you. Search our hearts, Lord, and if there's anything that does not align with you, throw it out. We give you permission. We thank you, Lord, for your word that is accessible to us and accessible to teach others. We thank you for your grace and your mercy as we learn to adjust to your standards. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, as I already said, meet you back here tomorrow. Know that I love you and I miss you. Until we see each other again. Good.